Hey everybody, Adam and Norm from Tested here in my cave. We're talking Mando today. Yes, uh, recently Adam, we were at Silicon. Yes. And it was one of the first times in a long time that we got to see other cosplayers. <sighs> yeah, it was really gratifying. I had been to a con, in, uh, uh, two cons on the East Coast. It is so lovely to see people bringing their stuff out. They're excited to bring it out. Like so many people integrated masks into their yep. costumes, but like just seeing cosplay again was really refreshing. It's invigorating. And you saw a lot of Mando cosplay. Dude, so much Mando and so much, like I'm working on a Mando. I've yep. talked about it. I'm specifically working on a Beskar Mando because I like that swagger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there's ve there were very few. A lot of a uh, lot of Gen One Mandos yes. with the brown armor, yep. the first yeah. generation. Uh, it got me. It galvanized me to want to break out my Mando and start to work on it again. I think we talked about it afterward, and one of the things you called out was you're appreciating all the construction and different ways people are putting together their Durasteel armor. But you said everything could maybe. Use more weathering, could be everybody, a little dirtier. Everybody's too clean, <laughs> everybody's too clean, oh my gosh. So there are like a number of companies that are making beautiful Mando costume add-ons. Uh, the, the rounds that sit in your bullet belts, the bullet belts themselves, there's several people on Etsy making great versions. But when I see all the aluminum pieces in the Mando yeah. costume, they're all just like fresh off of the CNC mill or, or, or lathe, and it makes me crazy. So I had some kid come and show me his costume, and I'm like, give me one of these rounds. Okay, so take this to a polishing wheel, spray paint it black, and then polish the black off and put it back in. I'm like, I want everyone's costumes to be a little dirtier. And so we have the hankering to do some weathering yeah. uh, and have Mando on the mind. Timing was perfect because you also just recently got this Mando helmet uh, from the Black Series, Hasbro's Black Series. Hasbro's Black Series is one of the best things to happen in cosplay because it is a mass market product that is, look, when I was a kid, we had Don Post in which the Darth Vader mask was like half the size of the real right. thing and not quite right. At this point, Black Series is turning out pieces that are like 90, I feel like 90, 95% as good as a screen use piece, and they're like 100, 120 bucks. Yeah, uh, they had a great X-Wing Poe Dameron helmet mm -hmm. from a couple years ago, and we've seen the threads of the RPF of people you know, taking that as a foundation to then mod, paint, weather up. Uh, Absolutely. Which is what we're gonna do with their Mando Beskar uh, Black Series helmet, and you have an interesting point of comparison. I do. So so I, as soon as I found out that a Novos was selling um, their version, which is cast off a screen used original, yep. I had to get that. I'm like, obviously I'm a nut for accuracy, but really specifically, I wanted the thing that, that Pedro is wearing in the show. Um, and this is a gorgeous helmet. It's, you know, in every way, it's got that real Mando look to it. Uh, but I was backstage in Florida and I saw one of these and I was like, holy cow, that is a really mighty, respectable mass market version of that. What's fascinating to me is that the issues I have with this in terms of accuracy are that this one, the mass market one, is too sharp. Ah. It's really crisp on its edges where this one, which has been manufactured by the, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, by a shop has softer edges. It's a little curvy because, you know, there are vagaries in the casting. I imagine this must have been, you know, catted up, you know, 3D model, mm -hmm. approved by Lucas. This went through far more pre-production, I think, probably than this did. Right. They had to integrate some electronics, all the interior detail. And there are people that sell interior kits for uh, other Mando helmets, but Hasbro comes with it built in, and it's actually a lovely interior. I, yeah. I don't mind this extra detailing, and this is another. A uh, place that's ripe for, I think, some uh, some painting and weathering to make it look good. Geometry-wise, we're really impressed by this. Yeah, it's, it's geometry-wise, it is very it, close. I mean, I have a hard time finding. Here, let's turn it this way. I have a hard time finding places in which it's not dead on. I mean, even down to like the width of the pieces. Yeah, they've clearly, they've gotten. Yeah, that is a really, really gorgeous piece. Except. It's, it's missing. Clean. <laughs> it's, it's clean. It's this clean. is like right out of the <laughs> yes. factory, and that's yeah. not that's not the Star Wars universe. Uh, well, not only is it clean, it's missing uh, all like the oil on the inside. Like this is hand painted, right? Yeah. It has yeah. all the, the, the to match what was used on screen. Yeah. Um, but also, you can tell the the silver finish is different. Well, th and this is an interesting thing to talk about reflectivity because, if anything, I think looking at the camera shot like this, it's really clear that. 
on one level, the Black Series helmet is more reflective than the Anobos. And I'm not sure this is a Lumiluster. It might mm. not be a Lumiluster, which is the paint they use for the actual Mando costume. That doesn't matter for the purposes of this discussion. What's interesting is the silver here is more reflective, but the actual surface is almost like semi-gloss. Whereas on this, the silver is less reflective, but the surface is a high gloss. I would love to put a clear coat on this and see what it does as a first pass. I think it might dull some of this silver, but add this kind of kick, which is a very distinctive thing you can see on screen. You yeah. can see the way it hits light um, and see what we get out of that. I think, and that's the easy thing to do. Yeah. No, we're not asking anyone to repaint this whole thing to match no, no, no. The, the tone <clears throat> and tint of that silver. Um, and I'm sure there are people who've bought the Black Series, hit it with a Luma Luster, and it looked absolutely perfect. That's great. That's not what we're gonna do. We're doing the budget the budget weathering of the Black Series helmet here. Oh, this should be fun. Well, we have two helmets. Uh, actually, I even, where's my other one? I've got a third one. I bought one of these for myself. So we've got some, we've got some iterative pieces we can uh, experiment on. Well, let's do it. Okay. Okay, properly masked. Yes. Um, so I think that we talked about this off camera that the first thing to do is to hit this with a gloss coat and see about bringing it into something closer to this level of reflectivity. And when you said that, I look at that coat and I, it looks to me like a candy coated finish, yeah. uh, which in the past the way I've thought of using it was something like floor wax. Like yes. Future floor wax, which you can apply with airbrush. And floor wax is this great, one of the first things about working in movie special effects that was fascinating is you start to see where some real efficiencies can happen. So like you read like a model train magazine and it'll be like, oh, to get this candy gloss finish, spray it with this and then leave it for three weeks mm -hmm. while it fully dries. And it's like, no one has that kind of time. So like my friends who are painters at ILM taught me the trick of floor wax for eyes. Because mm. you can get this real like dewy, feel to eyeballs using that. So it also sets really quickly, it dries really quickly, and it airbrushes beautifully. So what if we, what if we did, I've got a Rust-Oleum gloss clear, it dries really quickly. I'll try that on mine. You wanna try floor wax on yours? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I've got an airbrush over here. This is always scary, the first application of paint on a nice thing. Nothing to do but start. Ooh, now all of a sudden that gets way brighter. <laughs> This is amazing. I had no idea I'd get like a chrome finish out of this. Holy cow, look at that. That's insane. I kind of love this as a starting place. Wow, that's crazy. How's, it, how's I, this one going? My hope is that multiple layers yep. will give it I think a you're exactly right, and I think you just gotta keep on keep layering on going, it yeah. in slowly yeah. and slowly, slowly. Holy cow, I love these. I'm, <laughs> the difference in these two treatments is blowing my freaking mind. And this is why I also love the spray glosses, is that they dry really quickly. This is effectively handleable now. Um, dude. I'm so surprised at how good this looks. <laughs> so one thing to think about with a paint job like this is that all parts of this paint job are not created equal. Your eye is gonna look for certain things. Uh, 
specifically, these two pie slices right here are perhaps the most important in terms of nailing the reflectivity. Um, down here, I've got a spot that's just a little bit less reflective. Doesn't matter, no one's ever gonna look at that. They are gonna look at this. And so if there's a mark here or a bit that's like, not quite all the same tone, this is where you have to take care of that stuff. And down here is where you don't. Um, it's like you think about it, looking at it like a painting, what part is gonna stick out to you? And if you look at it and you can see a variance in the paint job, that's gotta be fixed. But down here, there's so much else going on. This is Amanda walking away from you. You're not, you're not paying attention to that stuff. Um, when I painted my, um, when I chrome painted my Iron Man Mark I armor, one of the spots I concentrated on getting the highest reflectivity were the toes of the boots because those were smooth and round. And if those were highly reflective, they would feel like mirrors and you would end up ascribing that level of reflectivity to the rest of the suit. It's like they tell your eye, it's all this reflective and your eye's like, okay. Yeah, it's like a little magic trick. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're gonna get in no, that. No, no, we're not gonna get the candy coated no. covering. The other thing I realized that is so funny about mine getting a chrome coat from that one application is that everybody who paints props and stuff like this has ruined countless chrome paint jobs with the clear coat. Right. And this the is clear the coat <laughs> tends to just kill it. It makes it dull, it makes it uninteresting. So to hit a chrome with a clear coat and get it to be like twice as good is just never happens. I think I may want to try Florax over this. Really? Yeah, over mine. Yeah. Just to bring it down one value. Oh, Norm. Wow, you're you're getting a really nice. Yeah, we'll pass see on if, this. we'll see if it lasts. But that is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't going how all I expected. It's really fascinating. Okay, my <laughs> mind is totally blown by this. Um, what we thought was gonna be the simplest, the first thing we're gonna do ended up being this journey. Weird odyssey. So just to be clear, the Black Series original finish was a highly reflective, uh, yet uh, slightly diffuse uh, silver. Yes. And we thought by hitting it with a clear coat, we'd get more of this kind of Enovos smooth candy coat outside right. with similar reflectivity. We didn't get anywhere close to that. However, to recap, this one I gave a coat of clear coat and it immediately made it like mirror chrome. And then an application of floor wax over that gave us a really impressive finish that definitely feels like a not plastic. And this got better over time. Right, I watched it staring yeah, at it. develop and Over half an up. hour, yeah. And this one too, while slightly more um, dispersion of the reflection around the edges, it is also improving. Mm -hmm. I'm noticing as the floor, because I can feel the Florax isn't perfectly set, but as it's off-gassing, it is settling in. Um, I think we're ready to start playing around with some acrylics. Yeah, yeah. So. We're looking at the the Anovos one as the yeah. reference. Yeah, here we go. We notice that there's panel lines. There's black inside the recesses. Yes. So yeah, I think that the the it's going to be about sort of moving through in multiple passes. The black is definitely the first, and so there's there's black in here. Mm -hmm. There's black in there. There's um, some black in these details, and then. Uh, at the bottom of these, and then inside those lines. So I think that's our first thing. We just take a little bit of black acrylic and a chip brush and basically put it on and peel it off, put it on and peel it off. Then we'll go in with a, a rust and a couple of browns and start to button in this kind of dirt. And truly, right here is where it is most important. That's where so much of that, like, this is a, you know, a well-used piece of kit, is that story gets told right there. Um, and then we'll slowly uh, 
button it down. I, you know, I feel like what we'll do is we'll do most most of this weather painting with the masking on, just to give ourselves some some room to play, and then peel the masking off and do maybe do one final pass, depending. Great. So for painting, I think I'm going to use the Archive X acrylics that we talked about a few weeks ago. I built this holder for it. Um, Archive X is one guy. He's got his company. He makes Star Wars color correct acrylics that are airbrushable, which is frankly a wonderful service for humanity that he does this. Uh, and we're going to use some of their, their, they've got a rust and an earth and a roof brown. And I think that should be enough. I don't think we need a yellow. I think there's enough of the yellow and the rust. So maybe just these three. And we're not going to need a ton. Um, can we use that for the black as well, or? Uh, yeah, oh, right, black, sorry. Uh, concrete, armor gray, light reefer gray, lettering gray, engine black, there we go. Oh, also, right, I wanted to talk about this. So what is actually happening when the clear coat makes the silver chromy? Here is a uh, translucent acrylic, right? So it's got a slight uh, diffuse texture on one side. If I hit this with the gloss clear coat, see how it makes it much more see-through? how it takes away that, that diffusion, that's what's happening. The clear coat is filling in the, 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 the tiny inconsistencies and making them consistent. It's really amazing. All right. The Archive X paints have a ball bearing in them for mixing, which is great. Let me just put a little bit there. Oh, that's a nice oh. black, right? So a little bit of brown in there. Yeah, it's the, it's the weathered black. Uh, so let's see here. So with this kind of stuff, when I'm getting it into a into an interstice, uh, my goal is to kind of get it on and then get it back off again immediately. Just immediately pull it off. So I'm maintaining a nice consistency of the paint job. If you let it set, it's really hard to clean it off. So. Just going a couple of inches at a time. Yeah, also, this is um, different than the Hero one. It's actually not a, um, a crenellation, it's just a step. So we're kind of playing around there. Oh, you gotta move real fast on this stuff. Yeah, you do. And don't be afraid to like, con uh, like you know, go get another uh, paper towel. Yeah. So all of this is just about like popping out the details so you can really see them. So like, like that, just getting it into the corners. Can go a little farther. Yeah, and now here's maybe one of the more important ones is in that little crenellation right there at the brow. And then do that whole line in one shot. Would you use any medium on this to thin it out? Um, sometimes, but you know, the Archive X paints are, are already so thinned out for airbrushing that they're kind of ideal. Um, my only sadness is that I want more of everything. <laughs> so I'm also getting like little extra dirt here that I'm not working too hard to get rid of. Yeah, let it sit in the corners. Yep. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the ears. Try and get those right. Now I'm gonna go in with a darker black and I'm just gonna hit a couple of accents. You know, I'm also going and try to get in the bottom edge. Mm. It's just, it's subtle, but That's I sorry. think that it's where some weathering is. Yeah. So I'm just kind of going in and thinking about where. 
Anytime there's a line like where the reflection line is just too clean and unbroken, I'm trying to break it. All right. All right, sir. I think um, I think it's time to bring in the rust pick colors. Yeah, I know we started with just filling in these these intricacies and the channels with the black, yeah, but like yeah. every part where there's a hard edge that meets or a corner, I felt like it could use it. It needs a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly true. And it, when you when you actually look at even clean things or clean things, they need a little bit of that in the corners to make it pop, to give you clear lines of delineation. Your eye like wants to understand the story. And next, more brown. More brown, yeah. Um, the black was just sort of a, a little bit of a popping detail and not to ask the brown to do too much of that. It actually doesn't look like they did any kind of dark pass here on the Anovos, that they went straight to a kind of rusty brown. So I'm curious how this is gonna go. I'm thinking that we do a couple passes of the rust because I've got a light brown and a dark brown, and I think that the dark, I think they'll complement each other and deepen each other nicely. So I've just got a little bit of the brown, and I'm gonna come in. I'm not trying to be as monolithic as I was with the black. I'm just trying to get it there and then pull it, pull it back. Yep. See that? It's a little bit of a dab. Yeah. So here I'll do it over here. I'll like. A little bit like that, and then it's much more subtle than the black. See that? Yeah. Yeah. Also, with rust stuff, do stuff like this, like not uniform. Um, the world doesn't do that, and neither should you. <laughs> Uh, and when you do that, it really helps. Like you don't necessarily notice that it's like up here and down here. What you notice is like, oh, it just looks like it was really beat up. And sometimes as your brush gets drier and drier, it puts out an even better. Yeah, so like here even more. In fact, you can- A little bit of water in there. Just, to... just get a little, see that? How it's like pulling it off the corners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, get mm -hmm. a little bit of water on there and pull it back off again. Oh, that looks great. It's a nice brown. All right, I'm gonna do this. This is the scariest part, is right here, because this is where it's all really gotta work. Oh, I'm gonna do it. Let's see here. And the Mando thing is, there's a real swath of that. Ah, uh, yeah! Sorry. <laughs> I got excited. Now, yeah, it's starting to feel like a real desert, desert rat kinda, kinda finish. God, these, the, I love how these archive X's are laying down. I feel like I've been doing versions of this video since the beginning of testing. <laughs> I remember. Oil painting that endoskeleton. Oh my God, right. Always, it's funny, every time I bring in that that third color, I'm always like, do I really need this third color? And then I lay it in and I'm like, yeah, it helped. More on that home stretch that feels so awesome of just like really being able to kind of understand the shape. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really great way to see how the paint job is shaping out. Just a little more here.
Now, yeah, I must say, there's your, the fact that we can get here with a toy and about <laughs> 90 minutes of elbow grease is pretty mind blowing to me. It is a great time to be a fan of franchises that can make toys like Lucasfilm does, man. Every day is Christmas when you're pulling off the masking. Dude. Dude! So much fun. <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, I feel great. I feel like it can be even dirtier. I want to go further. Yeah. No, it's, it's certainly, it's like, there's no reason, there's no reason it couldn't be. Um, yeah, I would be curious to hold one of the screen-used helmets and take a look at its paint job, because my guess is it's, it's way more like yours than like the Anovos. Um, I've split some difference between those two extremes, but like that is just really nice. So, you know, when I look at these things, like I go and look for places where it's like, yeah, both you and I have a little bit of shading on this side here and it helps to pop that earpiece just so you see it a little better. And like, that's the kind of thing to go look for. I feel like um, with more time, I wanna, I, I let the paint bleed closer to the center a little bit, so mm -hmm, that's less mm -hmm. chrome. And then I wanna blend that, and that's very easily just, you know, polish that a little bit. Yeah, I like the dirt in here, just you've got a tiny bit there, but it really helps. It makes it, yeah, that's great. Also, don't forget that the whole bottom edge is gonna be one of the dirtiest spots because you're always holding right. it with greasy fingers. Greasy gloves. Yeah, the bottom edge and like you said, inside the visor. Yeah, yeah, right, that face really helps. Um, Weathering, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have links to you know where you can pick up this helmet plus the materials we use uh, in the description below and we'd love to see your takes on a Mando helmet or any other helmet in this universe. Absolutely, yeah. Um, this is super exciting to me. The idea that like that's a hundred bucks and that's 750, just, it's ideal. Like I said, it's a great time to be a cosplayer uh, and hopefully with this, you can make your cosplay even better. And remember, Mando's dirty. Stop going out there in those clean Mando suits. Dirty them up.